much, everybody. Today we're going to head into Premiere Pro. We're going to be looking at workspaces and how to customize your own personal workspace. <laughs> So as I said in the intro, we're going to set up our own personal workspace so we have everything that we could ever possibly want when editing video in one space. As you can see here in Adobe Premiere Pro, the majority of the things which are commonly used by people are put into Premiere Pro and we're going to go through the different windows and how to adjust them and move them around so you get your own personal workspace. It is worth noting that along the top here, as you see, you've got learning, assembly, graphics, edit and libraries. All of these different things, they can be clicked on and they are windows and workspaces and as specifically your things. So obviously if you've got a colon, it'll look your luminary colour and everything to do with colon and everything's in there. So you can also go into those different things, but just those save the settings for those different things. Because if you're like me, then you want everything on one screen so you can just edit it all together, then should you need to go into colon to do advanced colon and things like that, then you can go into those. So to pick it up, we're going to start with the audio meters. So above my head is just here. As you can see, I'm just going to drag it across. These are the audio meters which appear in Adobe Premiere and these give an uh, indication of how loud or how quiet the audio is, so we're just going to play some of this video and have a look. So as you can see there, the audio meter is creeping up and it's showing the different audio levels in the left and right channels. So it's always handy to have that so you can keep an eye on your audio and see what's going where. So let's shrink that back down and we'll go on to the timeline. So as you can see here, the timeline is in the bottom and this is where you drag your clips. And you can put multiple clips and multiple audio files on there as well. And you basically, you go around with the timeline, go to different times, cut, edit, paste, everything like that. And that is your final video where you're going to do those edits. And next to that, you have tools as well. So you've got like your selection tool, your ripple tool, your cut tool, all that sort of thing. All of those are there handy next to your timeline, so should you need them, you can get access to them. But most things when you're using tools and different things like that on your computer, it's so much easier using shortcuts on the keyboard rather than clicking on different things. So the selection tools V, and you've got T for type, uh, P for pen, and go back to V. So you can easily flip between those different things just by pressing one key rather than having to move the mouse, click on it, click on the other clip. It's just so much easier using the shortcuts. So now we spoke about those, we're going to look at the program window. So the program window is also known as the program monitor and this shows your timeline video. So any edits that you have in your timeline is shown up in this program window. It's so not to be confused with this, this other source window. So when you're doing the edits on the timeline and you want to play it and press the space bar or whatever you use to play it. Okay, I'll just do it. But as you can see, that's put in the program window and that's gone through there. The source window, however, is when you have your project panel workspace window, or whatever you want to call it, open, and you double click on one of the clips, that loads up in the source window so you can actually use only this clip to watch. And you can drag your in-out points, you can drag around the timeline, and that sort of thing. So, for example, I load up this video and I want this clip from here, so I'll mark it in, move the point is where I want that, and mark out. As you can see, that selects that clip and drag that on the timeline and that drags it across. And again, with this, when you want to use shortcuts so you can have your endpoint, which is I and core for the outpoint. So much easier using keyboard shortcuts than clicking on different things like you've just seen when I right clicked and did it that way, which is so much easier. The other thing about this is um, the source one as well is if you wanted to just import the video or just import the audio of that clip, you can also do that. So on the bottom of the source, as you can see here, we have drag video only and drag audio only. So if I click on that, video, that's only going to drag the video aspect of it, and if I click on the audio, that's only going to drag the audio aspect of it, so it's really good for different things like that. So that's the source monitor again, and now we're going to be talking about the project window. So as you can see here, this is the project for your Adobe Premiere Pro project. And so this is where all of your video, audio, pictures, and everything like that, regarding your project that you're creating, is actually stored. And as you can see here, you can create different bins and things like that, so you can have a video bin, drop all the video clips in there, then they're all in a nice or lovely fashion so you can easily find them. What does well when you create your sequence on a timeline, it puts the, the timeline in there as well so you can do different things like that. And here if you want to click on the words, you can click on that and go timeline, rename it, and as you can see on the bottom, the timeline is actually renamed as well. And just the same as your, your finder window, you can do your copy and paste, so I can do copy and paste and I can have timeline 2. So for example, if I want to edit a full video, then I can copy that timeline, create a new timeline off it, and then create a 30 second video or a 60 second video from that without disrupting the original video. Then I can save them both in the project, and I can go back to them at any one time, 
Yes. System. So up next, we have the essential graphics panel, and this is where you have all of your titles and overlays and things like that. You can have it set up so you have your templates, as you can see here, I've got my local template file set up for different things that I use, and you can also go into Adobe Stock so you can get essential graphics from Adobe. Like this uh, autumnal one, for example, what I have to do is just click on it, drag it on your clip, and then it'll load up. I'm just going to scale this to frame size, because the video is like smaller. As you see there, that brings up the thing with the full time. I'll just pause through. When you have the essential panel open, you have browse and edit. So you go to edit and it'll give you different things depending on the essential graphics. So as you can see here with this one, this has different global positions for up, down, left, right. Uh, you can flip the leaves direction. You can change the text in here. So it says text one, four, so you go title and second. So then basically when those update, that updates the essential graphics and that's it. Super, super easy to use. I said I've got one different one set up, so I've got like a, a 30 second overlay for the Academy of Aperture. So I'm doing those videos, which is this one. And again, scale the frame size just because this video is slightly smaller. And then whenever you play it, it comes up with your graphics on top of there. And again, you can set it up so you can edit it. So I've got all these different things that I have set up when I created the essential graphics. So I just go in, click it, edit it, change it, and it's super, super simple. Moving on from that, we have effects and effect controls and I'm going to put these into the same thing because there's not much to talk about in effects so it's super simple that way. So the effects panel has all of your different effects which you can use. So you've got audio and video effects so like this video effects and blur shot and so you've got a Gaussian blur so you want to drop that on. That drops it on and then in the effects controls this is where you change it here. So you can see Gaussian blur so it's changed out 50 and that blurs the video. Super super simple, super easy to use. One thing I suggest though, when you're in the effects, you can right click on a blank space and you can create a new preset thing. As you can see here, I've created one for physical media. In here are some of the most commonly used effects that I actually use, so they're all in one place rather than try and find them or put a search in to, to search for it and do it that way. So I'll just remove that blur and when you go back, as you can see here, I've got an ultra key, so I'm just going to drag this on and this is going to load up the ultra key option on here. All you have to do is key color, select that and that gets rid of the background. So that's how you do your green screen, that's really good. And then again you've got your, your clean up here, so you've got like colour correction, matte generation and that sort of thing. And then you can just uh, soften it up and get rid of the extra green spill off it, just like that. Like I said, if you have your effects preset set up, it's really really easy to find the effects that you commonly use, drag it on, and obviously go into your effects controls and do different things like that. The same as a click, should you want to zoom it in, you've got your scale up from there, so you can do that. And also you can position, you can drag and drop it easily. You can either write in the figures that you want or you can click, hold and drag and that changes all of the, the attributes for it and gets to where you want to go. The next thing I'm going to look at is the media browser. And the good thing about this is you can browse the media on your computer and drag it into your project file in the Adobe Premiere Pro rather than having to go to Finder or Windows Explorer to find the clips and then drag it or go to File, Import, do it that way. Really good for that, so you can just drop down the, the folders, search your folders, get your clips and add it on that way. Super, super simple. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the Lumetri Color Panel. As I say here, it's got a different section, so you've got your basic collection, you've got creative, curves, colorways, and match, HSL, secondary, and vignette. And in all of these different things is where you can do creative effects with the video, or actually just color correction to what you want to be. So for example, on the video here, should you think that it's too warm, you want to put it colder, you can change the color balance, just drag it all down so it's really cold or do it very warm, that sort of thing. Reset that and then it goes back to normal. Uh, there's also an auto option, so if you want to auto edit your video, as you can see here, put the exposure of a bit black further down just to do it like that. And if you're not sure about the metric color or how you want the video to look or what changes you need to make, then the auto is probably a good start for it. You have your saturation, so you put black and white or really saturated and things like that. And you want to create this, this is where you can add looks, which is look at tables, and that is the different color selections that you want for your video. So as you can see, you've got different looks. So you can go cine space, and that turns it to a cine space kind of look. There's a whole host of built-in ones as well, so you can go through and select those if you want to get sort of a generic standard look, which is commonly known with whatever you're selecting. And again, there's loads of them built-in, so if you're not sure what you're doing with video edit and video coloring, if you want a certain thing, so you want it like a a beach HDR, so you want that sort of look for your video, you can just click on that and that applies that to your video. So I'm just going to 
itself. And then here you've got the intensity, so you change the lift, so it's really intense or not intense at all. So if you like the look of the lift, but you're not sure on how much it's doing, it, you can just bring that back and that'll do it for you. And that's what's in here, you've got fear of film. So if you wanted to do like a, a fear of film kind of look, which you can't really see this on the green screen, but you can change that and it looks like a fear of film. You can start just sharpening, so I can just sharpen that clip up, and that looks really good. Vibrance, again. In the situation. And then in here you've got colour wheels, so you can sort of select your shadows and different things like that. So there's your shadows, mid tones, and highlights. You can change all of those so you can get whatever style video that you want. So, for example, you want your shadows like dark, so it's like something with a campfire or something like that with a fire. So you put the red, or if you're in ice, then you go for blue, etc. etc. Next thing we look at is the time code. As you can see here in the big, big numbers, this is the time code for the video. This is the time code for the timeline. So you can see here you've got your in and out points. So if I was just create some in points and out points, you see here there's your out point, and that's how long your video is for from your in to out. Where as if you look here, the duration, that is the duration of the entire timeline. And the current time is where the, the pointer is currently located at. So if I move this to roughly 44.22, so there that changes to 44.23. The time code is really, really good and really useful if you want to do video clips and you need to be certain length and that sort of thing. However, on the, the program monitor for the timeline in the bottom of that, you've also got the numbers here. So you can see the 44.23 here and also 2908 which is the in and out point time for the video. Just going to clear those in and outs and as you can see here, the next one, which is the last one that we're going to talk about, is the text option. So on Adobe Premiere Pro there's a really nice option in here, which is the captions option. So what you can do is you can uh, transcribe your sequence, you can create new caption track and import them. So for example, if I want to create a new caption track, I can do that. As you can see on the timeline, it's created a new subtitle option. So you can go here and where you're going to speak roughly about here, where the audio is going to come up, you can just click on the plus. Let's add a new caption and you just drag and drop it so I'll have the caption to about there. See, it says do it. So you double click on it and it gives you the option to edit that. So it's a new caption once to say do it. Like so, I'll go full screen and I'll play that again. As you see, the subtitles are going to appear on the screen now. Just like that. Super, super simple, super easy. So now with social media and video clips, and a lot of them have the subtitles built into the video clip, which helps them with the, the algorithms and things like that. It's super easy now that you can do it and you can just transcribe it, put subtitles on. And those are hard coded in the video rather than having to rely on the auto transcript options, which the different social media channels allow you to do. So that's all of the different window panels that you can use to set up your own custom workspace. And like I said, along the top you have the options so you can actually click on different ones to go to effects, color, all panels, etc. And those bring up windows related to specifically that thing. So your audio brings up everything to do with your audio, so you can edit your audio and that sort of thing. Like I said, we're going to talk about creating your own personalized custom workspace. So now we're going to look at how to change the windows and resize them, link them all together and that sort of thing. As you probably noticed when I was looking through different things and changing the panels, I was dragging panels, making things bigger, making things smaller and that's really easy to do. So next to the, the windows, when you hover over it, you see this little icon with the, the line down in two areas on the side and that just means you can drag the box a bit or smaller. Now the thing that we want to do is to combine different things like how we've got the essential graphics and the projects combined together in one box. All you have to do is the title for that workspace is click on it and hold it and then you can drag that to wherever you want to go. So in the program window over here as you can see, depending on the window where you drag it, it gives you different options. So where it's got the big square, you drop that in and that just goes in with that. So as you can see, the essential graphics is moved from project to program timeline. So if you drag that back and then the both get together, all you do is just drop that in there. The other thing to do is if you see around the top right bottom and left, there's these funny shaped sides to it. And what this means is this box with the program window, you can actually half it and have the essential graphics in one and the project in the other one. So I'm just going to drag this on the left hand side and let go. As you can see, that's just dropped that in there. So the space which was the program is now the program and the essential graphics. And saying, should I want to drag that on the bottom, that would do that. 
And again, all of your other windows, these guys are probably and different things like that. So once you've got it all set up, it's really easy once you can save it. And the other thing is when you drag it across, and as you can see here on the project, if you go to the right or left or top or bottom, it brings up these funny things. But if you go a little bit further, it brings up this green line. And what this means is that replaces that section of it. So as you can see down the right hand side, you have the audio meters, the essential graphics at one, and program. If I drag this essential graphics, that fills up that entire spot. So I can just drag that across. As you can see, there's your central graphics, and that's moved everything across. So, obviously, you just have to move it around again just to get the way you want to do it. But while we're setting it up, that's what you're going to have to do. So, set the model up really, really easy like that. And then, all you have to do once you're done, you a window, workspaces, and you can go save as a new workspace. And when you click on that, you can get that workspace in here, and that is your personalized workspace. So, whenever you want to access your thing, so like here, if I click on physical media, that's my generic workspace setup that I like to use. I've also got one for magic reactions, so that's just basically the one that we're currently doing at the moment. However, that's just going to be a program and a timeline, and that's going to be it. Like I said, the, the option at the top here, you've got effects, if you click on effects, that brings up everything to do with effects. You have captions, which is when you're doing subtitles and things like that. That. You have the colour room, which means like a luminary colour, and all of these luminary scopes and things like that, which are all related to colour and graphics. Those are the graphics and the titles and different things like that. So, the video is informative, and you'll learn out how to create your own workspace in Adobe Premiere Pro, and you're going to be on your way now to create your own personalised space so you have everything that you want to do when you're editing videos. And if you want to be interested in seeing more of these videos, then head down to the subscribe button, click that, click the notification bell so you can see the new videos. Also, leave a comment. If you found it useful as well, it'd be really good to get your feedback. If this is anything else that you want featured in a future video with Adobe Premiere Pro or any other applications that we cover on the channel, then leave that comment as well. Also, give it a like if you liked it as well. Helps with the algorithm and get the videos out. And until next time, stay there. <laughs>